You may want to pause the video and reread the problem before listening on. Also, I apologize for my rather hoarse voice in this video. We have an infinite non-conducting sheet, which we have drawn on the left side of the diagram. That infinite non-conducting sheet is producing electric field lines. You can see the electric field lines are projecting to the right. And then perpendicular to those electric field lines, we have these so-called equipotential surfaces. And what that means is that every point on a given dashed line would have the same potential. So for example, if we chose this first line here, we might call that the initial potential. We could say V initial is equal to 50 volts. And then we could choose a line further away, perhaps the last line, and we can call that an electric potential final equal to zero volts. Now we've chosen 50 and zero because we were given in the question that the equipotential surfaces have potentials that differ by 50 volts. So we could use 50 volts and zero volts. We could even use 100 volts and 50 volts. As long as they differ by 50 volts, it's going to make sense. And the question wants to know how far apart are these equipotential surfaces. So if we included an additional label here, we are looking basically for the distance from the first equipotential surface to the second equipotential surface. That distance we're just going to call delta x. Now we've learned in this chapter that if you have a uniform electric field, which is exactly what we have here because of this infinite non-conducting sheet, if you have a uniform electric field, then the potential difference, delta V, is going to equal the negative of the electric field multiplied by delta X. Now we have delta X here. We can solve for delta X by dividing both sides by negative E. So we'll go ahead and do that. And this is our expression for delta X. Now remember, delta V could be expanded as the final potential minus the initial potential. And then that would be divided by negative of the electric field. So everything is looking pretty good here because we have V final, we have V initial. We don't yet have the electric field. And you probably learned in a previous chapter when you studied Gauss's law that an infinite non-conducting sheet will produce an electric field of magnitude given by this expression here. This could be proved rather easily using Gauss's law, which you probably did in chapter 23. So we're going to take this expression for the electric field produced by an infinite non-conducting sheet, and we're going to fill it in for this E right here. So let's go ahead and do that. So there is our expression. Why don't we actually copy and paste it below so that we can simplify it? And perhaps the best way to simplify it is to enclose the delta V in parentheses, and then we're going to multiply the denominator and the numerator by that constant 2 epsilon. So if we do that, then the 2 epsilons will cancel out. So let's go ahead and rewrite the expression. And then the only thing we might wish to address is the meaning of the sigma right here. That is what's called the surface charge density. And the question actually gave us the surface charge density right here. They gave it to us in microcoulombs, so we're going to have to multiply that by 10 to the minus 6th in order to get it into the standard unit of coulombs. So let's go ahead and plug in all the known values. So everything has been plugged in, and when you simplify this, you will get 0 0.00. 885 and we calculated a delta x so this is going to be in meters this is the correct answer to the question notice one thing that this value here this was the value for epsilon naught that is a standard physical constant so that's why we plugged it in right there